Dennis Sun. Let me once more say welcome. This is the home of our development partners. Please move around freely. The first, I think we were all amazingly encouraged, if I can put it that way, by the candor, the frankness, the directness, the honesty of the analysis that was presented at the last meeting. Uh, and I know that that will be a partnership that will prosper under your leadership. Sebastian, if I can hand to you. Um, briefing, talks, organizing, I think I'm not sure why as well. <laughs> I think my co-ambassadors will be very happy. Um, dear Stephen, dear um, representatives also of the Kenyan government, dear um, ambassadors um, from the donor. I think um, together with all my colleagues here in the DPG, um, we share the conviction of Stephen um, underlined, um, and also the heads of corporation from all our embassies that, that put um, the groundwork together. And I think we should, in, in, this, in this configuration, we will really achieve good results in the next in the next month and, and years ahead. Bring to practical fruition this dialogue to enhance the effectiveness of our development approach. Your presence here today demos systems in favor of developing countries. Kenya's participation and robust engagement in the Global Financial Africa Heads of State Summit and the African Development Bank, Bank are unique. Such engagements, our voice has caused Kenya's proactive role to meaningfully to the global financial resource. During the first DTF, we launched the revamped development coordination program. Effective efforts yield tangible results. One of the resolutions was to hold these high level forums at least twice a year. Today, we gather in fulfillment of that work. This engagement framework. For instance, there has been a change in the stewardship of the DPF. His Excellency Ambassador Martin Doa concluded his tenure at the Ambassador of the Kingdom of Netherlands to Kenya, in Kenya's development priorities. We are grateful for his dedication and leadership. I am pleased to announce that the DPF leadership mantra has been passed to His Excellency Sebastian Prof, the Ambassador to institute a high-level government policy forum chaired by myself and the Prime Cabinet Secretary, Honorable Simon Dara. I am delighted to report that this forum has been constituted and has been meeting. It has unlocked and given direction a joint sector working group for our constitutional commissions and independent offices. Through Executive Order No. 2 of 2023, which created a CCIO liaison office in my office, we endeavor to produce our joint understanding during the first DPF, we committed to enhance the absorption of our external funding projects and to work together to develop a framework to strengthen the resilience of our country. In preparation for droughts and devastating floods, recently we experienced a season of floods that resulted in the loss of over 200 lives, close to 10 lives, and widespread destruction of other forms of livelihoods and infrastructure. While the floods have not fully ceased, there has been some reprieve then that this thematic dialogue on strengthening, strengthening resilience is timely. Amote is a team of 10 joint sector working groups coordinated by my office has been working on proposals to the proposed roadmap to a well-coordinated and robust framework which will allow us to build our ability to anticipate, respond, adapt and build strategies particularly from our development partners on how to strengthen and deepen our lessons initiatives. His Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as we embark on today's discussions, we can have a swim. <laughs> and uh, we continue getting to know each other informally. I encourage our CSS and PSS. We become better people. We get better results. And our objectives will be met with a lot of efficiency. So I want to really, really say well.